Hello, welcome back to Hungry for History. In the last episode, I made my first batch of pemmican with bison meat. Today, I'm going to show you how to use pemmican to use a couple of historic recipes. Let's get it started! <laughs> Pemmican was a perfect survival food for fur traders, voyagers, and explorers across the Canadian prairies. It's lightweight but high calorie. One pound of pemmican is equal to four pounds of raw meat and it has a long shelf life. In the last episode, we made pemmican from scratch and tried it out. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to cook with pemmican. Today's recipes are from Samuel Steele's memoir, 40 Years in Canada, Reminiscence of the Great Northwest. Sam Steele is a legendary figure in Canada. He was a soldier and a policeman. A year before he passed it away, he was given a knighthood by King George V in England. Today in Canada, you can find public schools named after Steele. Canada's fifth highest mountain, the Yukon Mount Steele, also took his name. In 1867, the Dominion of Canada was created. The British government transferred ownership of the Hudson Bay Drainage Basin, also known as Rupert's Land, from the Hudson Bay Company to Canada. The Canadian government wanted to police the newly received frontier territories of the Canadian West. In 1873, Prime Minister Sir John Macdonald established the Northwestern Mounted Police, the forerunner of Canada's iconic Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Samuel Steele joined the Mounted Police at the age of 25. On June 8, 1874, Steele and his 274 colleagues set out from Dufferin, Manitoba, and embarked on a 1,300-kilometer journey across the Canadian prairie. When Steele and his division were stationed at the Fort Edmonton, they relied on pemmican and the mountain trout for food. In his memoir, he describes how they cook pemmican. Quote, Inspector Jarvis bought a supply of pemmican, which is the best food in the world for the traveler, soldier, and sailor, either on the plains of America or in the Arctic regions. It was cooked in two ways in the West, one a stew of pemmican, water, flour, and if they could be secured, wild onions or preserved potatoes. This was called a rhubarb. The others was called by the plain hunters of Richaud. It was cooked in a frying pan with onions and potatoes or alone. Some persons ate pemmican raw, but I must say that I never had a taste for it that way." Unquote. From Steele's description, we know that rhubarb is a stew made with pemmican. Richaud, if I pronounce close enough, is more like a pemmican stir fry. Let's start with making rhubarb first. To make my rhubarb recipe, you need 3 ounces of pemmican, 1 yellow onion, 5 yellow potatoes, 6 cups of water, 1 teaspoon of flour plus 2 teaspoons of water. As for seasonings, I use a half teaspoon of black pepper, white pepper, and thyme, and 1 teaspoon of salt. Step 1. Dice the onions and chop the potatoes. Step 2. Cut the pemmican into small cubes. Step 3. In a small bowl, add black pepper, white pepper, and thyme. Each is half of a teaspoon. I also add in 1 teaspoon of salt. Step 4. Add 6 cups of water to a pot and bring the water to a boil. Step 5. Add pemmican and onion to the water. Cook for 5 minutes until the pemmican dissolves in the water. Step 6. Season the soup with the spice mix and salt. Step 7. Add the potatoes then continue to simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes until the potatoes are cooked through. Step 8. Add a teaspoon of flour into a small bowl and stir into teaspoon of water until the mixture becomes smooth. And then stir the mixture back into the soup. If you want your stew thicker, you can add in more flour. As for the pemmican stir fry, also called the ratio, you need 3 ounces of pemmican, 1 yellow onion, 4 yellow potatoes. As for the seasonings, add a half teaspoon of black pepper and white pepper, and 1 teaspoon of salt. Step 1. Cut the pemmican into small cubes, and then dice the onion and chop the potato into small cubes as well. Preheat a medium-sized pan over medium heat, Add the pemmican and spread it out. We don't need any extra oil for this recipe since the pemmican contains 40% beef tallow. Wait until the pemmican melts in the pan before adding the vegetables. 
step four, add the onion and the potatoes, spray them out and mix with the pemmican and stir frequently and cook for about 10 minutes. And then add in black pepper, white pepper, and sea salt to taste. You can also add whatever seasoning mix you like. Are you ready to try out the pemmican dishes? Yes, I am. Let's start with the stew. I totally agree with Sam's deal. Raw pemmican does not taste really present, but pemmican stew tastes way better. I agree. This is what I was hoping for uh, when I talked about last time that I think the pemmican would be excellent with some spices in it and this really hits the spot after a long day of uh, doing landscaping so I appreciate it. It tastes a little bit spicy because of the quantity of uh, peppers that I added in. Yeah it's good, it'll clean out the sinuses. This is the stir fry. I think I like this one quite a bit better. I, I also like it. I think the caramelized onion adds a little bit sweetness to the dish. And I think that the uh, texture of the pemmican meat, uh, having been dried, really complements the stir fry way of cooking it uh, more so than the soup. But I could see the soup being really good during the cold season. Yes, and I like both recipes. I think those two will be our go-to pemmican dishes instead of eating raw pemmican. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you liked it. If you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, or share it with a friend. We'd really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.